Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can make QuickTime 10 more useful for you. Now, when Apple launched QuickTime 10 with macOS 10 Snow Leopard, it seemed like a cool idea at first. They completely revamped the user interface. Uh, it looks a lot nicer, but still, for a lot of people, it's just a basic video player, and that's pretty much all they use it for. But truthfully, there's a ton of stuff you can actually do with QuickTime 10. Just a lot of people don't know about it, and they're relatively not hidden but unknown features to it. And you can actually use QuickTime 10 as a basic video editor and there's a whole bunch of nice built-in tools so it is pretty nice. So I'm going to launch QuickTime 10 It's also right in your applications folder. So first off if you click on the file menu and click new movie recording right here you can record videos right from your eyesight camera uh, just like you do in photo booth but you have a couple different options. First of all you can select different microphones and you can choose your different qualities. So if you choose medium, you're going to get a relatively low quality video. Um, but if you have a non-HD EyeSight Mac, such as the one I'm on, so not the new iMac or the new MacBook Pro, and you click maximum quality, now this only works on Macs from I believe 2008 and up, you'll get this option to record in 1280 by 1024 resolution. And this is a resolution you normally can't get with other applications, so you can actually record slightly above uh, 720p resolution with any EyeSight camera. The next thing you can do is go under the file menu once again and click new audio recording. And from here you can just record your voice and you can see the little waveforms there of how I'm talking. Once again you can choose the different qualities and the microphone input. So if you like audio recording but you don't really want to have to go through any type of editing process with GarageBand, this is a little simple way you can do quick audio recordings just like that with an external microphone or you know, even the one built into your Mac. The next thing you can do is go up to the file menu and click new screen recording. Now this is an entirely new feature to QuickTime 10 and this is one I, I think a lot of people don't really know about. For all the how-to videos I do for Cult of Mac, I use the application ScreenFlow uh, to record my screen. But if you want to, you can actually use QuickTime 10 to record your screen. So you get a couple options. You can choose your microphones and the quality where you want to save it to. Once again, you're going to get your little audio waveforms. And you can click record and start recording. And then up in your menu bar right here, you're going to see a little stop recording button. So right now, your screen is recording and everything I do will be recorded. So when I go up and click stop recording, then it's going to process and you're going to see the video come down. Now I can play it back and you'll see just how it recorded the screen. So it does record in a, a pretty decent quality. It's a little bit CPU intensive. The only problem with it, and the reason that I don't use it for my screen recordings, is that it's a little bit limited and there's not really a lot you can do with it as far as post-production. But if this is something you're looking to do and you don't really want to spend any money, QuickTime 10 is built into every Mac and you have a free screen recording application. And this brings me to another point. Once you have a movie open, you can click on this little arrow kind of jumping out of a box and you can click trim and right here you have basic video editing capabilities now this is nothing that you're gonna see in you know Final Cut or even iMovie for that matter uh, but this is kind of iPhone-esque video trimming so I can choose the start and end times just like that and let's say I just want this part where I'm opening up the applications folder I can do that and I can click trim and it's gonna trim the video for me and now I can play it back just like this and it's just that segment now I can also go like this and I can share it to either iTunes, it'll go into my iTunes library, Mobile Me Gallery, or even YouTube. And I can click this and I can enter my YouTube credentials and upload videos directly to YouTube this way. So let's say if you use the movie recording feature and you want to directly upload that to YouTube, you can from QuickTime 10. And you can also upload screencasts right from QuickTime. And this YouTube publishing is a very handy feature that you find in iMovie. Uh, but it's quite a bit simpler to actually just open up QuickTime and upload videos right from there if you don't want to have to 
go through the whole YouTube process on a web browser. And when you go to save your movies, QuickTime gives you a lot of options here too. You can say this is optimized for an iPhone, an iPod, an Apple TV, your computer, and then HD 480p, which isn't really high definition, HD 720p and HD 1080p. So you can choose any of those. And likewise, when you go up to your share menu and click iTunes, you're going to get some different options here as well. iPhone and iPod, Apple TV and computer. And it's instantly optimized for those devices. So that's about all. Those are just some quick and easy tips for you to make QuickTime 10 more useful than you probably think it can be. And you're also going to get some of the features that were previously only seen in QuickTime Pro, which was a paid application. So I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.